Hey everyone, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today we are going to answer the big question and I need your help for this because this is just my opinion and that is, is the TT going to be a future classic? Now my answer to that is yes. However, I think for probably the next five or six years the answer will be no. Uh, stick around in this video and we will discuss why. So kicking off, the TT is an iconic style car. It was one of the few cars that was actually made from a concept, or the concept was actually made into production, um, and they have a fantastic following. Now, the reason the figures, I believe, are so low at the moment, and that's not just this year because of um, cost of living and all that kind of stuff, it's to do with quantity. Because while there is so many on the road, the price will stay lower. Um, especially because there's some good ones, there's some bad ones, and whilst there's still cheap ones around, the rest will be pulled down a little based on that. Now, I give you an example of this situation, um, is an R32 Golf. They have absolutely excelled. They are now double figures, if you, uh, as in five figures. Um, you'll get one for four figures, but it won't be particularly nice. And they've sort of pipped the curve as such. Obviously, the, the price of most cars goes down and down and down and down until the point that they sort of reach their plateau and then it will start to build up if there's a desirable platform available. Now I believe the Mark 1 TT is very much the similar, it's just a little bit behind because of this sheer volume. Now more importantly, which model will become most popular? Now that is a very very good debating point and it's a question I get asked quite a lot because obviously people if they want to buy an Audi TT, they will watch some of the YouTube videos, which is great. Um, they'll do their research, and then I'll get a message, oh, hey, Dom, uh, I'm looking at buying this. What do you reckon? This is the circumstances in which I want to use it. Um, so certain things suit people differently, fair enough. Um, but when it comes to future classics, if you're buying it for an investment, that is the debate that we are going to have today. Um, there's loads of different models going right from a 150, uh, 170, 180, 190, 225, you've then got Quattros, you've got non-Quattros, you've got a Quattro Sport, you've got the V6, the 3.2. So there's quite a platform available. Now, if we look at something that was quite popular back in the day, which I had quite a few of, which was Vauxhall Novas, back then you could buy a car for £400. The TT, given today's money, is probably a similar price, um, some of the cheap ones, and now, to buy a four-door saloon that nobody wanted back then, you could pay four or five thousand pounds. So, let's use that as an example. Back then, you could buy them cheap as chips. I must have bought 10 for less than 600 pound a car. So, bargain buckets at the time. If I'd have kept all of those now, I would have been sitting on the best part of probably a hundred thousand pounds worth of cars. Very, very nice. I believe the TT will follow suit, and I believe that all TTs will be worth quite a bit more, providing they're not absolute rust buckets, uh, sort of fairly good ones on the road, MOT, ready to go, will go up in value when the numbers come down far enough. Now, the most desirable ones are going to be your 225, your 240 QS and your V6. Now, the 225 is the one that there are the most of, um, and I reckon will obviously pull a good premium because they are super moddable. If they're completely original still, they may be worth quite a fair amount of money. But let's be honest about this. Most people buy a TT, and if they're going to do a few subtle mods, they will do modifications to make it look like a V6 or a Quattro Sport. They're going to be wanting to put that bumper on with the added vents on. They are going to be wanting to put that V6 three bar grill on. They're going to put possibly a rear diffuser on, spoiler extension, all the things that a V6 and a Quattro Sport come with as standard. So that instantly makes you realize that those two are going to be the more popular options available. Now, of course, engine wise, the 3.2, that VR engine is absolutely fantastic. Bags of torque, drives really well. And of course, it gives you a DSG option, which is not something you get on a Quattro Sport. So you have the option of both manual and DSG in the V6. So that's a good point to consider. Yes, when they're 30 years old, a DSG box probably will feel like sloshing around in a bucket trying to find a gear. However, 
it is still something that people may want. Um, super power, torque, drives lovely straight out of the bag, no modifications needed, comes with all the visual experiences that you would want from an Audi TT, um, that sort of sporty look and that absolutely fantastic sound. Then moving on to the Quattro Sport, you've got the original stylings, but you have a black top if the car is not black. Um, if you've got the red, the Avis, you're gonna have a black roof. Very nice, very contrasty. If you're lucky, you may have the pole position Recaros, which in today's money are fetching sort of two to three thousand pounds, depending on condition. It's an expensive couple of seats. Um, and they also have other interior things like Alcantara steering wheel, gear knob and handbrake cover, which set them aside from the rest. And of course they have that seat delete, which is iconic and it is a modification that most people do because unless they have small children that stay small, the rear seats become very outdated very quickly. Um, so I would say it is gonna be a battle between the 3.2 and uh, the Quattro Sport for the top spot on what is worth the most in the future. Now, of course, at the moment, in 2024, the Quattro Sports generally are a tiny bit more expensive. Um, I would say if we pick a car, let's say 80,000 miles, couple of owners, really nice car, a Quattro Sport would probably be about £10,000. A V6 would probably be about £6,000. So there's quite a, a gap in the market there quite a, a difference. I reckon that will come closer together as time goes on. Um, the numbers of Quattro Sports on the road is far less than V6s at the moment, but with the V6s that are getting cheaper, as in the ones that have chain stretch that are gonna need their chains replaced, which is a few grand, and of course, any ones with DSG box issues, um, they are getting broken for spares because they're worth more as parts than they are as cars. So that will rapidly bring the numbers down, probably bringing it in line with QS numbers because QSs, I think, are getting to the point where they're a little bit too expensive to break now. Let's just give this car a little workout. I love driving this thing. So I think the QS is, apart from the odd few, are probably past the point in breaking money-wise. So they're gonna start naturally increasing in value as time goes on. The V6s I think will lag a little bit, but will follow. Now, let's go to 225s. Now, my favorite, only because they are a bargain car in my opinion. Um, you can pick one up from a thousand pound-ish for a one maybe not the best, but it's all right. Um, right up to sort of three or four grand to get you a really nice one in today's market. And modifications wise, you can do whatever you want. The platform is so well documented. There is very few things that you can't do or someone hasn't done in the past. So if you want to do modifications, there is a predela, another little squirt. If you want to fit a bigger turbo like this, you want to forge it, you want to do uh, exhaust mods, you want to do any kind of handling mods, they have all been done. So there is an absolute list of things you can do, ways to save money, second-hand parts. And because they're on a multitude of platforms, the 1.8 Turbo is shared in many other models, I think the price of parts will stay relatively low for quite a number of years. So most popular going forward, I would probably say, is the 225 most likely to pick the greatest value let's say when they're 30 and 35 years old i would probably say it's going to be the qs just because i think the numbers will be slightly less although i think it will be a close second for the v6 just because of that dsg option and how reliable that engine is going to be forever and ever because that thing they have been i mean if you look at the 2.8 VR6s, them engines go for years and years. People have now taken them out 30 years later, turboing them, making them six, 700 horsepower and then sticking them in something cool. So there's definitely, definitely um, gonna be a market. And yes, they are a future classic. I will stake my name on it. Um, we'll come back in five years and we'll review this video and see if I was right. Now, I wanna know from you what you think is gonna be the most, let's say in, where are we now, 2024, 
2030, right? Someone is saying to you, you need to give me an answer. 2030, which is going to be the most valuable and why? And do you think they're going to appreciate in value? Of course, they're not going to be Ford Cosworth um, prices, but I believe they're going to be, what do you reckon? Between 10 and 15,000 pounds for the good ones that are left. Because let's be fair, if they're 35 years old, they should be pretty good. Um, but I want to know what you think. Do you think I'm right or do you completely disagree with me? Do you think all TTs are going to lose off the face of the planet and still be worth a grand in five years, six years time? Let me know down in those comments. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a question I get asked a lot and it's something I'm quite passionate about. Hence the reason I've still kept my TT because I can spend loads of money on it as I go and I don't think I'm going to lose too much going forward. But that's enough of me talking and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.